How you doing? Welcome to the third video of the Common Station Wagon. Pretty cool, pretty exciting stuff. In this one, we're gonna do master cylinder stuff. I told you that last time. If you don't remember that, little link up on the top, go watch that. Um, before you watch this, if you watch this first, before the second video, this is the third video, if you watch the second video first, you're fired from your job. I already contacted your boss, they already know about it. So, anyways, where am I sitting? Can you tell? I'm in the engine bay. I, I am the 12 valve Cummins at the moment. I'm just kidding, I don't have that much torque. Oh, So, this, oh my goodness, it's still leaking. This is the clutch master cylinder from the 95 Dodge Ram that the 12 valve came in. I'm gonna put that in here. If you remember, this is not a manual car, it's an automatic car that I put a manual pedal in. You can see it right there. Watch the first video if you wanna see that happen. Also, you see the brake booster's gone? It's huge. Factory brake booster's right there. I'm gonna put that one in, that's from a Jeep Cherokee. I'm also probably gonna do the new master cylinder from the Jeep Cherokee because smaller diameter than that, than that is for it, you know, because this one is a four bolt, the other one's a two bolt, I'll show you that momentarily. But master cylinder stuff, and then I'm probably, I told you last time I was gonna get the ECU mounted, but I think realistically I'm gonna get it mounted this time, because it didn't happen last time. So here's the ECU from the 95 Dodge truck. I wanna build a bracket and be able to put it like there, up in there somewhere, because then the wires can come right out of the hole, bada bing, bada boom, no big thing. So, that's what's happening in this video. Brake master, brake booster, clutch master, hopefully I can get the clutch working. Well, not working, obviously it's not driving, but like, and then ECU mounting, and then other stuff. Let's just jump right into it. Hey Drake, just jump right into it. Okay, this is the Clutch Master from the 95 Dodge truck. As you can see, see the rod in there? It connects. That hole goes around that rod. And if you put it on there, oh, definitely cannot do that with one hand. I'm gonna set you guys down here. Okay. So, you can see it's connected. See, I'm holding it on with my finger. That's where it needs to be, but if you look, see the rod's crooked right here? Can't have that. That's why I'm gonna notch it. Make this hole open it up a little bit to this line. Not the one with the X, but this one. And that should get it sitting pretty straight and pretty clear of... I had to smash this in a little bit, I'm kinda sad about it. But it should get me clear to about right here. And then, go from there. I do need to patch this hole, but maybe not because... I also need to um, run a wiring harness through this side. But I might try and bring it up through the corner more. I don't, I don't quite know yet. Or I might even run the wiring harness on this side. Depends on... I can mount the ECU on either side. I would like it on the driver's side, but if I can't, I can definitely run the harness through this way. I need to look at the engine before I get to the ECU mounting because looking at the engine will tell me where the harness would be the easiest to put or the least amount of like wire lengthening would be. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it there. But anyways, I'm gonna cut that hole. I'm gonna have to make a bigger circle to cover this whole entire thing and then notch it out the rest of the way of this circle. So that is the plan. Alrighty, and just like that, I've got a working clutch. See what I did there? So I patched that one hole and then I made a new hole for the master cylinder to come through. So now that works, so one day I'll be able to bleed my clutch. That's exciting, now I gotta work on the brakes up, kick the fuse box. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Ba bam So see, this is it from this side. 
It's a pretty tight fitment there, it's pretty all right. So then, this, I'd shorten that hose, because that connects to right there. And then I could mount this, like right there or something, nice and out of the way. So I might do that for testing purposes. Get that thing mounted up. And then, the booster time. So, look at this. This is the factory booster for the station wagon. See how big that is? Ginormous. This is the booster for a Jeep Cherokee. Look at that. I can almost like grab around it. This is like, I don't know, basketball size and this is smaller than like a soccer ball or something. I'm gonna pull the master cylinder off of this because I don't need it there right now and then I'm gonna see if I can't. I'm hoping that this is just gonna line up but I highly doubt it. It might. I might need to shorten the rod or cut, put this rod on this one. I don't know yet. But these bolt holes, they look similar. So hopefully. So that's the next step. So look at this. This is the Cherokee Booster. Look at that. It's like right there up against the clutch. Got a little bit of distance. That's good. Those bolt holes. You just, I just have to barely drill them bigger. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Mopar. Just looking out for Mopar, look at that, it's gonna work. See that hole? So you see where the rod comes through right there? Okay, you just move the brake a little, bam, lines up. What? I just have to drill those holes bigger. Then the booster's gonna work. And that's a 90s booster versus a 70s booster, so by default it's better. Here, Drake, let me switch you places. All right. So see, you can see, look at the two holes. See that, just barely, just barely not big enough. That's awesome, and the bottom ones are slotted so they can go up and down. Wow, that's cool, that's gonna work. Cherokee Booster fits in a Dodge Aspen, in case you didn't know. You just gotta do slight modification. And then I'll use that master, and I need to get that, oh, I think those are the same, dude. No, they're not, they're slightly different. So see this, the lines come out on, on the driver's side of the master. On this one, they come out on the passenger side. So I'm gonna have to do some line rerouting, but I could have guessed that. But that ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. Go to use that master, I'll be, be able to use that booster. So master and booster will be from a Cherokee, a Jeep Cherokee, an XJ. And then this is from a 95 Dodge Ram. Alrighty, I'd say that's a successful day. I have a clutch master cylinder in there. And so see this, so from the 95 Dodge, I don't know about the 2500, but the, or the 1500s and the 3500s, I'm assuming the 3500s are the same. I don't know about the 1500s though, the 2500, the one I had, the reservoir for the clutch is external, it's like a separate, it's not one piece, so see I can just, modify the hose. I'm actually not going to use this one. It's all crusty and gross. I'm going to get a brand new one. And as you can see, in case any of you keyboard warriors out there are going to say something, I know this is cut. This is particularly for, or uh, specifically for mock-up purposes. So now that it's in there, I can buy a brand new one of these and then the slave comes off of this. This is a brake booster and master cylinder from a 19 whatever, 1990s Jeep XJ, Jeep Cherokee XJ. That's what this came out of. It was a four cylinder model, but it's the same as the ones in the six cylinders. Nothing's different. Uh, the brake lines are not gonna work. They don't screw in. These ports in this are a little smaller, so I'm just gonna leave that like that. And then I wanna get a new one of these. That seal's all cracked up. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, that is that, and eventually I will probably take this back out and paint it one day, but for the time being, that's good. It's out of the way. It looks good, it's nice and small in that engine bay, compared to the stock one, which was like, the stock one was like this far away from that thing, and look at that. Now there's all kinds of room. So that's pretty exciting. I do have a pedal that works for both clutch and, well, pedal with slight resistance. Oh, did I just almost rip my jeans? I just felt them go that was not good. Oh, whoa! Just watch brake fluid fly out of there. So anyways, look at that. 
I have a brake pedal, I have a clutch pedal. Wow. That's exciting. So, it's the end of the day, sun is going down. I won't be able to mount the ECU. I am gonna go and look at the, ooh, that should not be there. I don't want that getting messed up. We'll put that up there. I am gonna go look at the Cummins and see where the engine's gonna sit in the bay to know where I want the ECU, if I want it on the passenger side or the driver's side. But now, since I closed up that hole, right here, I'm almost thinking I'd like it on the passenger side. And in case anyone is wondering, yes, this is self-tappered on. I understand that it's not gonna be permanent. I will weld this to the chassis, but right now the welder's way over there and the car's way over here. So for mock-up purposes, I just self-tappered it. I'll just rosette weld those when the time comes and then weld this all the way around. Well, as much as I can, I won't be able to get it down there. But, yeah, I think that's it. This is on there, it's solid, it's mounted. I'm pretty stoked about that. So that's a good first day in the books. Um, I will have to do new lines. I will have to do the new lines for the clutch and all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna call it quits. It's getting chilly. I still have no sleeves on, dude. That's not good. Um, I'm gonna go look at that engine, that 12 valve, and figure out some stuff. And then tomorrow we'll get that ECU mounted, hopefully, fingers crossed, get that ECU mounted. That'll be pretty exciting. And then I gotta do a couple little things, little button up stuff, all coming along. If you have an old station wagon and you wanna put a Cummins in it, this is what you do. I'm just telling you, this is how you do it. Well, any old car, I should say, any American, Mopar car because it seems like this thing this is a 77 Dodge Aspen I'm using parts from a 95 Dodge truck and a 90s 2000s Jeep that's all Chrysler stuff so everything is pretty similar I did have to drill the holes out for the booster the four holes where it mounts in I did have to drill those out a little bit but not crazy but I mean it's it's in there there we go. These are riv nuts. Let me tell you about them. I'm just kidding. It's not what we're here for. This is the ECU from the 95 Dodge Ram, and I'm going to put it on the driver's side here. I know this side is pretty busy already, but I'm going to mount it right here in this flat open space. Bam, just like that. That's the plan. It's out of the way. It's nice and tucked up. Through that hole that I've made yesterday right there, with that patch panel, I can just open it back up again to do to support this where the wires come through. So that's gonna be there. But first, I need to cut see this little bracket piece right here. I gotta cut that out. But I'm gonna drill the holes for this, and then I'll have an ECU in there. And look who showed up! Are you vlogging right now? Dude, I'm vlogging right what? now, dude. Hey, dude. You're not gonna warn me, dude. <laughs> Been, no warning. Could have been butterballed naked right now. Dude, what? No, it's too cold for that. <laughs> what, the, what the? What the? Dude, smash that about? like dude, button. Dude, hit the like button already. I'm <laughs> <laughs> gonna obliterate that like button. Freaking obliterate it. Drake, why'd you turn the AC on? Oh, because it was a bit too hot yesterday. Uh, Garbage, it's winter. Fresh. It's New Mexico winter, so it's like... 70 degrees or something. It's like 66 <laughs> degrees. It's cold. We're in hoodies. Dylan has a beanie on, so you know it's official. Uh. Dylan doesn't wear beanies. Were you just flexing? No. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, I gotta cut this thing out. I'm gonna do that real quick, and then I'm gonna stick that right there is up that there. Your cabin air filter, dude. That is my spark tubes. Phil Swift here. I saw this boat in half. Whoa. I see my <laughs> what the? I put my computer in. I like how you don't tell, like, hey, welcome back. It's just like, I put the computer in. I now. did and the thing. Clip of just like, I put the engine in. <laughs> All right. Okay. So look at it. There's my ECU. Let's take a look at it. 
Just if you just look at it, and then I have to. I, I don't have a hole yet, but I'm gonna just make this a hole where there was a hole, and that'll plug in. Bada bing, bada bam. Rumor has it that you don't actually need the ECU to run 12 valve. That's what my brother said. I don't know how much he knows. He's not a diesel guy. Actually, he is a diesel guy, but whatever, dude. He said, oh, hey, welcome. Look at this freaking dude. He said you don't need the ECU for anything with the engine, just the charging system. What are you doing, Paco? All right, it's days later from the last clip you just saw. We now have the supervision of O-Juice. O-Juice Jehoahan, that's his name. Actually, it's not, it's just O-J. But I call him O-Juice Jehoahan, look at him. That is a Jehoahan, let me tell ya. Anyways, butter. Oh, okay. You can't even see him, there he is. That's butter, butter with, a, with two D's, not two T's. It's butter, not butter, all right? So, things are happening. Um, 12 valve things. Last part of this video, you just watched me. I don't know why I'm updating you, I'm gonna update you. You watched me put the ECU in, do the brake booster and the master, clutch master. So, now I'm done with the station wagon for the moment and I'm gonna work on this 12 valve Cummins. If you remember, I did build a engine cart. It is quite all right, I think. <clears throat> so I have the engine there on the cart I'm gonna pull. All these are already loose. They're just finger tight, all these bolts. Well, they were, maybe not anymore. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna pull the, but I wanna pull it all the way down to the head, so I gotta get this front cover off first. I'm gonna get, break that pulley loose and then get the timing cover off and get this chingus off and then start pulling fuel lines, and, and I want to clean everything as I go. So, pretty fun, pretty cool, pretty all right. You take off this housing, whatever's under there, clean it all up. I have been soaking the bolts, that's why it's all wet. Been soaking bolts for the last couple days, therefore, or hopefully, they, um, why are you sitting like that? It's all hopefully they won't be too stuck. I do want to try and get the head off today. So, and that's, the purpose of that is I don't want a 900 pound engine swinging around in the engine bay while I'm up in there trying to make engine mounts and trying to figure out how much of the trans tunnel needs to be cut away and the floorboards need to be cut away. I don't want that much weight in there because that looks sketchy. So I'm gonna take everything off. I already have gaskets, so I'm gonna take it down to the head gasket anyways. I shouldn't be pulling the pistons and the rings and such. Unless I have to, I guess I'll know today, hopefully. But as far as like crank bearings and stuff, I am eventually gonna take the oil pan off and just check the bearings. Just look at them, see what they look like. If, I mean, you know, it's a bearing. You'll see if it's not good. It's pretty easy to tell. But this thing was a healthy running engine, so we shall see. Hopefully it's all good. All right, first things first, I'm going to, I need to move this here, let's do this. Uh oh, don't scare the cat. I got. Whoa! Slipped! You trying to do some skids? Q Tokyo Drift music? I can't do it. Oh, there he goes. Later, Chief. Uh, I gotta pull this guy off. At least I'm gonna tap those bolts off. I'm hoping it's kinda like a flywheel where it just kinda wiggles off. Maybe I'll tap it with the hammer. I don't know. And then I gotta pull the sensor off. I'm gonna take some pictures. Water pump's gonna come off. All this stuff here on the front, I'll pull this. I'm assuming that's the thermostat housing. I could be wrong, but I'm assuming this is the thermostat housing, so I'm gonna pull that off. And then, get this timing cover off. Curious to see how those timing gears look. I do have a KDP, I'll explain that when I get in there. Killer dowel pin fix thing. So, I'm gonna look at that, but I'll show you that when I get the cover off. So I'm gonna do that real quick. It's getting exciting. Hey! <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, gross. Oh, no. It's like carving a pumpkin. Stuck, dude. Oh. Ew. Oh, oh! Dude, but the gasket came off in one piece! 
Nice. Oh, I think it's metal. It is metal. That's actually kind of clean, huh? Oil. Wow, I took the thing off. Look at that. Gears. Where's my timing belt? <laughs> oh, bless you. Thank you. Hey, Dylan showed up. Saw it, dude. Saw it, dude. All right, so I pulled the cover off. You saw I pulled the... Oh, I'm not even filming anything. I pulled the water pump off. And then some other junk. Oh, 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 oh. This was surprisingly easy right here. That crank pulley came off easier than a flywheel. Not bad. Good job, dude. Thanks. I didn't do anything. Next, I'm going to pull off all these fuel lines. That's going to suck, I think. Maybe not. And then pull off the water separator and then the intake. And then probably the valve covers. Just one thing at a time, I'm going to pull that head off. I do need to do some cleaning, though, because things are dirty. Alrighty, so this is the stopping point for tonight. I got the timing cover off. I have things that I pressure washed outside. Timing cover's off. The water pump's off. The thermostat housing. This is the thermostat housing. I said that. I said I think it was. It was. I confirmed it. And then I took some other things off. All the fuel lines. This thing looks empty without any fuel lines. But I have those soaking. And so I think Sunday when you next watch this video, maybe tonight, I don't know, I'm going to pull the intake off and I'm going to pull the valve covers and then I need to pull the head off. And I'm going to do it in reverse sequence. That's how you're supposed to do it. And there's like 36 bolts, so that's going to be a whole mission. But anyways, this is where we're stopping tonight. And by we, I mean I. Dylan helped. He helped. <laughs> he held like a tool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, hey, just, I'm just here for moral support. <laughs> um, yeah, so then I'll pick this up when I work on it next. But dude, we're getting the comments stripped down. You should subscribe. This is a great time to just pause the video and subscribe. I'll see you in the next clip. Alrighty, I was not filming, but I realized I probably should be. So, right now where we are, I don't know if you recall, maybe I didn't tell you, I degreased all the bolts. So that's why the timing cover's back on. I know it was off in the last clip. But that's just so I can keep track of where all the hardware goes. So the front of the engine, everything is loose. Like the timing cover, I mean, you can see it's just like, just chilling there. Right now I'm breaking the head bolts loose. I figured I should film before I get all of them off. I am on number of the sequence. When you take it off, you're supposed to go reverse of the sequence. So I started with 26, 25, 24, 23, like that. So I think right now I'm at 12, which is this one. Oh, that one's loose, so I'm not on 12, I'm on 11. That's down here, that one. So, I'm gonna finish breaking those loose. I got the intake off, that's where this channel is, right here. 12 valve Cummins are known to get spider cracks in here and in these little galleys, and it kinda splits this way. Well, they're not known for it, but it, if it is going to happen, that's a spot where it does happen. I mean, 12 valves are pretty strong. There's a reason they're so expensive. Um, I checked all these. They look good. I checked everything. Before I get the head fully unbolted, I'm going to break everything loose. Like, this has to get broken loose. This bracket. Um, I need to... Well, I can't get that plug until I get the head off, because the injection pump is in the way. But then like these two bolts, I don't know what those go to, but I need to break them loose. And then on this side, I don't think there's anything on this side, to be honest with you. I need to figure out how to get the in injectors out, so that's something I'm going to have to look into. Here's the injectors right here. Bam. Bam, 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 bam. I have to get those out. Um, yeah, it's coming together. It's coming together pretty good. So, I'm going to try and get the head off tonight. I think. I wonder what's under that cover. I think that's where the camshaft is. Yeah, probably, because there's that gear right right there. I bet that is where the camshaft is. I'll be curious to look at that. And then I need to pull the injection. Well, that's... I'm just getting ahead of myself. I'm going to break these head bolts loose. So, I'm on number 11. That's this one right here. Let's make it happen.
my goodness, I got the head off. You see that? Jeez. Oh, if you're doing this, get a friend, because I mean, this is a heavy. This thing probably weighs 130 pounds, like at least. Hey, wake up. Wake up, old son. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, Jay! There he is. <laughs> um, freaking heavy, dude. Freaking big heavy. But I got it off. And it looks really good, actually. Which I'm glad. All this debris right here, that's, this, see this carbon lip right here? That's just that that fell in at when I took the head off. Wow. So that's not bad. So the head gasket's not on here. That means it came off with the head. Wow. Yeah, this is the water jackets are big, rusty. You see that down in there? Let's see if you can get in there. Yeah, they're pretty rusty. Not, not crazy. Not like unbelievably rusty. They look fine. These cylinder walls look fine. I still see cross hatches. Oh my goodness, no way. Do you see it? Yeah, you can kind of see it on the camera. Wow! I'm stoked. This one looks a little crusty. This one looks like it was getting water into the cylinder. You see that? That is not good. Can you see the cross hatches still? Yes. I don't know if you can tell. Wow. Might have got myself a good engine, boys. <sighs> Alright, so the other day I did pull the head off. I showed you that. I told you about that. There's the head. Extremely heavy. Here is the block. What is this? The short block? Not even. There's all the crap on it. So I'm going to tape up this whole... I'm going to tape up this whole situation to keep dirt and debris out of here. Because today I'm going to put this whole setup right here. Everything you see here is going to go into the wagon for motor mounts and... Well, I guess if it's an engine, it'd be an engine mount, you dummy. <laughs> um, I'm going to build engine mounts, and I'm going to... I have to cut away the trans tunnel, but I'm actually not going to do that in this video. That's going to be next video. You're going to see this go into there. So this is like things happening. Cummins wagon is coming together. So right now I'm going to tape this up just to keep debris out of the, the push rod holes and off the, you know, the cylinders themselves. Alrighty, so it's all taped. I showed you. You just saw. Pretty exciting, huh? Um, that was probably the highlight of this video for you. And if it was, you should just go ahead and hit that like button. You might as well subscribe, right, Drake? Yep. That's right. Drake is doing mini bike things. Drake, let's show show the internet your dilemma here. So my chain is stretched. My tensioner is all the way back, and the engine is all the way forward as far as it can go. So, and not only that, his chain is such a piece of junk, it like the links get stuck, bent, and so then it derails itself. So, I got myself a new chain here. Family's on. And he's gonna put that chain on himself. And if you wanna see the finished product, you're gonna have to come back to next video, so you might as well freaking subscribe, like I just said. Oh, cat. Anyways, that's the end of this video, because next video. I'm putting this 12 valve into that station wagon. It's going to be pretty sick and you're going to want to see that. So, if um, you made it this far, like I said three times now in this clip, go ahead and subscribe. It's going to be right here, I'm assuming. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it right here. And there's a video here and there's a video here. And you're going to want to watch this one because that one's, wow, you, you won't even believe what happens in that one. And this one over here, whoo, that one's even crazier than this one. But you should just watch them both because I put them there. So just go ahead and watch them. Like and subscribe. See you guys next time.